Um, yeah, so I was saying that I, I prepared this lecture from scratch and uh, it's been challenging. <laughs> it's, it's the second week. I'm not doing anything but preparing and reading and studying and getting crazy, but I think it's an improvement. I'm, I'm growing. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, what do you do research on? <laughs> How to teach better. <laughs> uh, this week, I'd be just reading everything I could about this graph neural net, graph convolutional networks. Uh, I don't know. I read maybe a few tens of publications. Uh, I'm a bit drunk, to be honest. Um, okay, so, 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 so what are we talking today about? Graph convolutional networks, exploiting domain sparsity, right? Well, like yesterday, um, we saw that uh, also Xavier mentioned the three property of natural signals that are locality, stationarity, and oh, he called it hierarchical. Well, I call compositionality. He used the term compositionality for meaning the whole, the all three things. But uh, again, I guess it's just a, it's just jargon. Uh, we mean the, the same thing, right? Um, and so. What are these graph convolutional net networks? Are again another type of uh, architecture or the another way of exploiting what is the structure of your data, right? And so let's uh, actually get it. Let's get there from just last week lesson. So last week, let's get let's have a, a quick recap, right? We talk about self attention. In self attention, we had this set of axes, right? Uh, so x, we can go x1, x2, and so on until xt. And they, you can you know, stack these x's one after each other, you get that capital X, right? Matrix. Uh, each small x, x uh, is a size of Rn. And then my hidden layer for the whatever x I take in, in consideration is going to be this uh, linear, uh, linear combination of these uh, vectors in the set, okay? And we know exactly from, I think, lab number four, that a linear combination of vectors can be written as a matrix vector uh, multiplication. Uh, and so we have here that the H, it can be, is equal to this capital X or times A, right? And so A contains the coefficient that are scaling these vectors, okay? Uh, then we had like, we were saying that all these coefficients are positive. Uh, they had to sum to one. And then if only one is actually one, then we have the hard attention, okay? And this big X is just this collection of Xs, okay? But then again, it's a set, right? A set means it's not a sequence. There is no order, okay? Um, so, so far you should be familiar, right? You should be very actually comfortable with this kind of notation, right? This linear combination of columns, it's just a matrix multiplication, okay? So then I was reading uh, the literature about this graph convolutional network and I read and I read and I'm like, <laughs> oh, it's actually the same thing. <laughs> what the heck? So, 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 so actually let's get there from this perspective, right? That is my perspective again, might be not the best, but you know, you have me, so <laughs> you, you deal with me. So let's start with this GCN, uh, graphic, no graphical, graph convolutional networks. So my A, which is this vector uh, on the left here in the, in, that, in the attention that is containing all the coefficients that are basically weighting these columns, in this case, it's going to be, I'm going to call this my agen agency vector, okay? And what the heck is this agency vector? So we have to start introducing uh, a little bit of notation. In this case, I introduce here my first vertex, uh, the red one, which is um, also has, you know, representing, representing my x, uh, you know, my given x input, and is going to have, you know, my h. Uh, hidden layer, like we were seeing before on the on the attention part, we had like this generic X and generic H. So I'm gonna keep using this kind of generic notation. So I have my generic vertex V, where I can have my generic X and my generic H. Okay, and then of course you're gonna have 
all the other vertices, right? Which I'm going to be calling them VJ, on which you can find the signal, which is going to be the XJ and the HJ, okay? The hidden representation and the input value for this specific uh, vertex or node. And then what? Well, you have many, no? You have just the whole collection of uh, data points. But then there is a difference now. We have that these uh, nodes, these vertices are actually connected. And so we draw a set, a set of arrows. And so right now, basically, we're going to have that my capital A, my, my, sorry, my vector A is going to be having components alpha J, which are equal to one whenever there is an incoming arrow from vector VJ to myself, okay? So if you think about how we were doing this before for the attention, we were computing A as the soft argmax or just the argmax, if it's a hard version of the attention, between uh, like of my uh, scalar product, the scalar product of all those keys or all those rows times my query, right? So you had all the keys times the query, and then you had these scores, and then we were performing soft argmax or uh, hard, hard max, and then you have basically these values that are telling you to who you should look at. In this case, here in the graphical graph convolutional network, we have this structure that is given to you already. Okay, and so again, this agency vector can be thought again as this vector with ones corresponding to these uh, vertices that are having arrows pointing towards myself, the red guy, okay? So if you understand this, it's finished. The lesson is concluded, right? <laughs> because exactly uh, everything else will follow uh, automatically, right? So D is going to be my one norm, which is what? The number of ones I have, right? So if in my case here, D is gonna be two, right? What is the size of A in this case? In this case, can you tell me? If you're following, are you following? Answer my question. Are you hearing me? Oh, no, nodes. Yeah, yeah, and the number of nodes, right? So the number of nodes in this case is six, right? And we call this from, in the self, in the self attention, we were calling this lowercase t, right? And so cap, uh, lower, lowercase a, a vector, is gonna be of course of size t because you have to multiply T vectors, right? So you're gonna have T nodes or T vectors, and therefore you need T coefficients, right? So of course, um, I think uh, A has size T and D, which is the number of ones, basically, is going to be the, um, is gonna be basically the, the degree, right? I think this can be also written as the norm zero, I think. Yeah, this is also norm zero, right? Cool, cool. All right. Um, what next? So in self-attention, we had that my hidden layer was this uh, matrix multiplication of my X times A, right? So this means the columns of the X are scaled by the factor factors inside A. Huh. Okay, first issue. Uh, so if you have multiple ones, this H is going to be larger for uh, vertices that have many incoming connections, right? And if he has like, let's say just one incoming connection, it's gonna be, the, 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 you know, small, right? So this stuff is proportional to the number of uh, incoming connections. So how can we fix that? Oh, hold on, messages, incoming messages. Yeah, you do, <laughs> of course you divide by the number of items, right? And so we multiply that with by uh, D to the minus one. Cool, cool, cool. Um, so what next? Oh, maybe we want to rotate things. So let's put there a rotating matrix. Um, and then we haven't, we haven't considered ourselves, right? So this is basically considering all the incoming edges, but we don't consider ourselves. We might want to consider ourselves, right? As if there would be a self connection. So we can add this another, uh, another guy, right? This U rotated version of the X. Cool. Uh, then just to make the whole thing uh, like looking like a neural network, what do we add? Yeah, a nonlinear function, <laughs> of course, right? Uh, Relu, sigmoid, an H, whatever, okay. 
uh, we said that we have like several of these vertices, right? We don't have just one vertex, right? We don't just have one X. We have many of these guys, right? So we had a set of vertices or set of inputs, right? That for I that goes from one to T. And this leads therefore to this matrix notation, right? So you just stack multiple H's, you get a matrix. Uh, by stacking multiple X's, you know, you rotate multiple X's, you just get the stack. And then you sum this to the... Uh, attention where the attention like the agency vector now is going to be agency matrix it's going to be all these columns right uh where they tell you where where are the incoming connections right those incoming arrows and that d is going to be the uh, in the inverse of the diagonal where you have all the degrees on the diagonal okay finish that was it right Graph convolutional networks. It looks like attention to me, but okay. So what do we do today for the lab? Okay, are there questions so far? I mean, are, are you with me? Are you, have you been following, right? There is nothing here that we haven't seen last time, basically. Well, no linearities, self-connection. Where do features come in? Isn't X a feature? Okay, X is a feature, yes. X is a feature and the feature here are so there is like there is a graph that is telling you which uh, vertices are connected, and each vertex has a x, which is the input, and then it's going to have a hidden value, right? Are the previous hidden vectors used to compute the new one? Uh, are they? They are not, right? Here, you can have multiple layers, right? And so the second layer, the h layer, next layer is going to be using the hidden layers, the, the, the hidden values of the previous layer, right? It's gonna be just a normal way, uh, like you stack multiple of these blocks, right? Uh, the, U, <clears throat> the U is just the, uh, a term that allows me to consider also my own value X, okay? So right now, A is gonna basically give me the um, average of these columns that are incoming. And then U allows me to, you know, perform a rotation of my own self vector. So whenever you have like a, a graph in this case, there are two options, or it's U and you're like the V, the red V, or it's the other, which is the VJ, okay? And so here you have two terms. One is taking care of the V, red V, and the other one is taking care of the VJ. Final question, the agency matrix does not uh, have self connections. The agency matrix has zeros on the diagonal. Uh, if you want to consider uh, the agency matrix with the ones on the diagonal, you can have like identity plus the A, right? Okay, so next slide, which is going to be the thing that we are implementing today, okay? Uh, otherwise, did I miss any question? Um, so ALF is in this A, so the diagonal is are all zeros. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So agency vectors, the agency vector here has a one only if the VJ, which is my neighbor, is actually connected to me. Okay. And since there is no a arrow from myself that goes back into myself, there is no uh, one in correspondence to my own position. So a agency matrix has, you know, in the diagonal all zeros and then has ones corresponding to the incoming connections. If you have a non-directed graph, then you have asymmetric metrics because you don't, you have, you know, the same one for both directions. It's going to basically having, it's like having um, a arrow on both direction of the edge. Okay. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Sure. How is X represented? X is a vector, which uh, refers to a node. So how do you represent a node using a vector? how you represent a node. Uh, so X is a, a vector, right? Of yeah. dimension N. And this is your set of vectors, right? This is your set of inputs. You have one to T. This is from self-attention vector, self-attention self set, right? So this is a set. And from this other slide, basically you have that only some of these uh, axes are connected to other axes. So you have a set of axes, and then you're going to have basically a connectivity, you know, specified 
between these vertices. So X and H and H next layer and X, H next layer and so on are basically uh, values in a set. But then the point is that these elements in this set are connected through these arrows. Okay. And so that that's simply it. Like there is no magic here. Like we were what telling. I mean, like, to say, uh, suppose you have a graph whose no vertices are labeled one, two, three, four, five. So how do you convert from label one to X one? Each of these is going to be just a number, right? Whatever. And you're going to just play with this. So you just have to think about, you know, this can be thought as a sequence of, again, words for a sentence, or can be thought as the pixels in an image, right? Uh, it can be just one linear image, you know, or you can have, you know, whatever, to a normal image. So these are just the values, the one that we called uh, in the domain, in um, RC, right? Whenever we are mapping the, mapping the domain, capital omega, to these image values, right? So this is simply a set of values. And in this case here, we just specify a specific domain, which has connections between vertices. Simple as that. <laughs> Anyhow, so we are going to be checking the code right now so that you can uh, understand everything that is going on, okay? Don't, don't, don't get too scared. But I don't think there is any more uh, craziness going on. Uh, the only craziness part is going to be the type of graph convolutional network we are going to be implementing right now. And so we're going to be starting, uh, we're going to be implementing something cool because otherwise, otherwise it would be boring, which is the residual gated graph convolutional network. What a mouthful. And of course, it's from uh, Bresson and Laurent. You can see from the reference below. So here, again, we can think about, you know, our own vertex V, the red guy, which again has this uh, input feature X and the hidden representation, representation H. And then you have the VJ, you know, again, with the all representing all the other, right? And then you have all these, these guys, right? Uh, in this specific case, actually, we are going to be uh, naming as well the edges. So in this case, my edge has also a uh, feature on it, okay? So in this uh, like graph, in this residual gated convol uh, graph convolutional network, uh, edges also have a representation on them. And so this is called EJ, okay? And so you have all these vertices that we were, they were white before, now they have like a uh, color. We're gonna have an edge representation for the input layer X and for the hidden layer, right? So we're going to have E, X, and then E, H. So what are the update equations for this residual gated graph convolutional network? So since it's a residual, we're going to start with the residual connection. We have an input X, the pink one, and then we have plus something, right? Uh, something that is always positive. So actually, this could diverge and an easy fix for this First equation would be actually having a additional weight multiplying uh, the parentheses, right? Anyhow, let's go for this version. So we have x plus something uh, for which we take the positive part. Uh, and inside we're going to have my rotation of the input, uh, which is exactly the same as we were seeing before, right? So here we have that h equal mm, rotation of the input x, right? So the same here. We have that h equal, okay, there is the residual, then the rotation of myself. And then we have plus a rotation of the xj, the incoming j, right? This rotation, it's also scaled by eta. And eta is going to be our gate. So now you know why it's called residual gated graph convolutional network, because we have a gate, eta, which is based on the representation living on the incoming edge, ej, which is modulating the amplitude of the rotated incoming vertex, xj, right? And finally, we're going to be summing for all the edges that are coming towards my own vertex, right? So for all the edges that are incoming, I'm going to be rotating the vertex representation of the incoming vertex 
and I'm going to be then scaling, modulating the amplitude of this incoming rotated vertex with this gate, right? Again, this gate, it's a function of the EJ. So what is EJ? Let's figure out the equation. So we have EJ is going to be a rotation of my initial edge representation that is populated with the input data. So EX is going to be my input data that is living on the edge. And so I rotate that. I sum the rotated representation of my incoming feature, xj, and then I sum as well a rotation of my own feature, ex, right? x is my own feature, I rotated with the matrix E. Sweet. So this is my ej representation, and then eta is going to be the following. So it's a um, sort of similar, like a, a variant of our soft argmax where um, we have that the numerator, at the numerator we have the sigmoid of my ej, which is the sum of these three components at the, at the, on the bottom, which is divided by the summation of all the sigmoids of the incoming edges, right? So we have a given edge, we, we compute the, uh, usually if you have the soft argmax, you're going to have the exponential of the uh, specific value divided by the sum of the exponentials. In this case, this gate is given to you by um, the sigmoid of the given edge divided by the sum of the all incoming edges, right? All incoming, yeah, connections. Uh, finally, we have that the next layer, so for the hidden layer, the next layer uh, edge representation, we're going to have a residual connection, so it's going to be my initial value, EX, plus the positive part of this EJ. Again, this may blow up because you're going to be summing always positive terms, uh, therefore I would uh, suggest additional weight multiplying these uh, positive parts such that you know you can have even negative values. Cool, cool. So that that's pretty much it, right? So if we compare to what we were seeing before, before we had that my hidden representation was some nonlinear function. Uh, in this case, we chose the uh, the ReLU, the positive part, right? So in this case, we have f is going to be the positive part here of my rotated representation of myself plus this term over here which is so this xad minus one it means take the average of the incoming axis right because a was equal one for the vertexes that are incoming towards my own vertex and then i divide by the d which is the degree which is the number of incoming edges right and so i basically sum all these incoming values and then I divide it by the number of the incoming values, so I compute the mean, and then I rotate the mean, right? The similarly, here, we're gonna do exactly the same thing. We have the rotation of all the incoming edges, right? So these are all the incoming edges, and then I sum them, but in this case, my eta is not just a constant that is equal to one over the number of incoming connections, but it's going to be a uh, number from zero to one, which is weighting my incoming uh, vertex representation based on what is the representation living on the edge. Hmm? So there are many uh, colors and numbers and symbols, but I don't think it's that different from what we have seen before. The main differences are this gate, which is no longer a like a constant factor, now it's going to be function of the representation, and then we have this residual connection. Again, I would say that here is missing a additional uh, parameter, right here and here. I would suggest to have an additional, an additional matrix multiplying here and here, such that we can uh, allow for you know positive and negative values, otherwise um, this representation may blow up. Now, how do we compute the representation for the second hidden layer? So we can call X HL, so it's going to be my layer L, L representation. Uh, and therefore, 
the xj becomes hlj and so all we have to do now is going to be basically saying that my h at layer l plus one is going to be uh, this current h right but i prefer to use h and axis in order to remove this additional uh, index that may create chaos right maybe chaotic all right um, so i had a yeah. question about if um in terms of like maybe a potential example um i'm not clear what it means to have this sort of um gated like recurrent type of model in the context of graphs like um so basically what is an example of yeah 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 sure so this gating part here uh the point is that all these different uh vertices here they don't have ordering right i don't know which one is v1 v2 i mean i know the order but this guy here this red vertex doesn't know how many neurons sorry how many vertices are connected to its own and then it doesn't know how to you know think about them in different ways unless there is some information coming from this edge and so this edge allows me to uh basically change you know modulate this incoming incoming message so this guy here is transiting this x transits down this uh this line but then it gets modulated by the representation or by this gate which is again based on the representation that lives on that edge so the edge has a representation and this eta allow it gives me a multiplier basic a factor that i can use a scalar to multiply each component of this vector here and so it allows me to tune you know what kind of part of the vector i, I may be interested in okay so this is going to be anyway trained with backprop so the network will figure out what the heck is interesting and what is not um, but yeah the, the rational here is going to be basically given that all the vertices look the same to me in this case because you know if you if you remove this part here you just get the summation of, of all these H's, right? And this is going to be, oh, just let's average everything. Well, like the, the thing I told you here, right? So this is exactly what I'm telling you here. In this case here, you just have A, average all the vertices, well, average all the representation on the incoming vertices, right? And so this is like, hey, let's blur out everything. Okay, it's like, let's, let's, <laughs> let's throw away all the information. In this case, instead, it's going to be, hey, we are not going to be just averaging out all these incoming values, but we're going to be weighting them. We're going to be modulating them based on what we think it might be relevant or might not. Okay. So that would be... And the is, the, um, is the superscript L and L plus one for the H's, like, does the that layer. mean that this is a graph structure over time? Layer, or? layer, layer. We have several layers, right, in this network. So... Uh -huh. the, uh, H, so HL with L equals zero is going to be my X. It's, it's talking about layers and not like time. Yeah, yeah, there are several layers, right? So you have multiple layers and all of these layers always leave. These layers are still sets, right? So as you have like a set of inputs, you have a set of inputs, then you have a set. So these are my set of inputs, right? Then you have going to have a set of hidden layers a set of second like hidden layer of the second layer and so like a second hidden layers at the second layer and so on right um and so but in here we just have sets the only difference is going to be that in this case mm -hmm. there are sets but then there is also connections between these elements in the set okay that's the only difference we have so the only difference between attention and this stuff here is that these guys here are given to you by this agency matrix instead of being computed with a attention like attending and computing the soft arguments and so on so that's this is my perspective from last week lesson so the only step that is the difference from last week is going to be that these connections are given to you finish <laughs> same everything else is going to be basically the same all right so time to go to the not notebook because it's going to be actually taking forever unless there are imminent questions all right, so this was taken, was uh, heavily inspired by the notebook from Xavier, 
uh, but I changed everything. So <laughs> yeah, I didn't like what he wrote as in uh, now it's uh, in our format uh, or in my format. So everything is going to be familiar, uh, at least for you. When I first read the thing was like, what's going on here? <laughs> Uh, okay. Okay. So import, uh, crap. Uh, the only difference here, we have this, uh, import OS, which allow me to set an environment, environment variable. So this DGL backend set to PyTorch allows me to tell DGL to use PyTorch. What is DGL? So actually you have to install pip install DGL. It's actually in the environment description. Um, DGL is going to be my library to use, uh, uh, convolutional net on graphs very easily. So we import this stuff and also we import this network X. It allows me to, um, to print a very pretty, uh, very pretty charts. Okay. I set some default. Oh, you can see now we are using PyTorch. So first of all, we're going to be showing, seeing these. So this is mini graph classification data set. It's going to, it's called mini, uh, GCD. It's mini GC data set. Uh, I specify the number of graphs, the minimum number of values, vectors, and the maximum number of vectors, no vectors, uh, vertices, right? And so uh, here I just call these with the uh, different names they have. And then I show you here these different guys, okay? So here you have the first type is going to be the circle type. So the circle graph where you have each of these are connected to the other one. And see, again, there is double arrow, right? Um, then we have the star graph, which is basically everyone connected to the first body. Then we have the uh, wheel, wheel graph, okay? So you can understand what it means. Uh, then we have the lollipop. Lollipop, lollipop, da, da. No, is this it? Okay, never mind. Uh, anyhow, so it's a cluster of points connected by a string. Um, it looks like a kite to me, but okay. Uh, there is the hypercube, which is super cute, uh, which is this crazy guy here. Um, and then there is this uh, classic grid, right? So this can be thought as like uh, an image or whatever, right? Uh, there is a click, which is, you know, fully connected graph. And then we have this circular ladder and graph. So it's a ladder which is closing itself, right? And so what is going to be our task? Our task is going to be uh, given a graph structure, try to classify as being uh, one or the other, right? So each of these graphs are going to be basically defined by is these uh, agency metrics. And given these agency metrics, we are going to be basically trying to figure out whether one graph is uh, one type or the other. The point is that these agency metrics is going to be of variable size, right? Because as you have seen this here before, right? Where is it? Uh, you can give a minimum and a maximum number of nodes. And so you can't really do uh, straightforward uh, classification, right? Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, I didn't say Google. <laughs> okay, my Google is protesting here. All right, so let's add some signal to the domain, right? So those are the domain. This is where the, the, the information stay, right? So if you have this guy here, where is it? Uh, if you had this one, no, this is the domain. And then on top of this, you're going to have the values, the colors, if you have a, a color image, right? So these are the domains. Then we're going to put some signal on top. So in this case, uh, let's actually read together. Uh, we can assign features to nodes and edges of DGL graphs. Uh, the features are represented as dictionary of, of names, strings, and tensors uh, called fields and data and E and data and E data are syntax sugar to access the features uh, data of all nodes and edges. So in this case here, I'm going to be just telling that each of my node information, so my axes, are going to be in the degree, which is the basically incoming number of uh, vertices I have. Okay, So each node, each x, has as value the number of the connected uh, guys. Each edge instead has the just a number one. So each edge has a number one. The other one has the number of connected guys. Cool. Uh, so here I just generate my training set and a testing set. And then I just plot these uh, to just show you that these guys have a feature. Both of them are called, called fit, right? 
and there is a fit, not like the foot, the fit, whatever is pronounced the same, a fit for the node N and a fit for the E edge, right? And so here we go with the equations for the gated graph convolutional networks. And again, they look terrible because it's a notebook. So we're going to be using this one, right? That are a little bit prettier. All right. So uh, before actually reading uh, these instructions, let's read uh, how the, the, the main, let's read the initialization part of this module. Okay. So here we can see that we have uh, a few matrices. We have A, B, C, D, and E, right? So we need those matrices. And therefore, whenever I start my module, which is going to be just a neural network module from Torch, PyTorch, right? We're going to be initializing uh, four uh, different matrices. So A, B, C, and D, E are NN dot linear. So actually, in this case, there is also the bias. There is not just a rotation. So these are affine transformations, right? Modules. Um, Moreover, we have a batch normalization for the uh, hidden representation and a batch normalization for the um, for the edges, right? Uh, whenever we do the forward pass, we send basically uh, the G, the graph. X, capital X, is going to be the collection of all these vertices, right? So like we have seen in the attention module, in the attention lesson, we had that my small x, uh, we can have like a, the set of all the small x's as represented by the big x, right? Uh, there is no, like, it's not a sequence, it's just a way of representing a set, right? So uh, in this case, graphs are made of sets of vertices, but where I can specify the uh, relationship, no, between which vertex is connected to which. So I have capital X and then capital E X, right, which is the all those edges. Uh, so we can have like a set of uh, edges and then we can consider the matrix where I have all these columns, right? And so here I'm going to be populating my graph with this representation. Uh, on the G and data, I'm going to be defining the variable H, which I just give all my initial representation. And then I'm going to have AX, BX, DX, and EX, which are going to be uh, the matrix multiplying all these columns, right? So you're going to get the rotation of all the columns, uh, which are simply uh, obtained by passing the capital X, you now the collection of all the X's to my matrix A, B, D, and E. Okay. Whereas C, C was multiplying, was rotating just the edge representation, right? So we have that C is multiplying the edge. And then we have this uh, function here that is uh, the, the new function, right? We don't know about this stuff. So let's figure out what it is. So maybe now we have to read what's going on here. So in DGL, the message function are expressed as edge UDF, user-defined functions. Edge UDF, user-defined functions, take in a single argument, edges. It has three members, source, destination, and data for accessing source node features, destination node features, and edge features, right? So whenever we have this uh, edge here, we're going to have a representation living on the edge. Then there is a, rep a representation living on the source vertex, right? The incoming vertex I used to call. And then we have ourself, which is the destination vertex, right? So we have source vertex, our edge connecting the source to destination, and then we have our own destination vertex, right? So we have a representation living on the source vertex, a representation living on the edge, and then a representation living on the destination. Hmm? And those are x axes if they are associated to the first uh, layer of my network, right? Are going to be called h if they are associated to the second and so on layers of my network, right? Uh, so H is my first hidden layer, which is the second layer of a network, right? All right, so back here. Uh, again, so this uh, edge user-defined function have a source, the, the VJ, a destination, the just V, and the data living on the, on the edge, right? All right, cool. Then the redu reduce function 
are node UDFs, right? User-defined functions. Node UDFs, user-defined functions, have a single argument node before you had edge, edges, right? So the node acts like on a given node, right? So which has two members, data and mailbox. So data contains the node features and mailbox contains all the incoming messages features stacked along the second dimension, okay. Finally, we have that update all, which was the function we just seen here, the new function. Update all um, has two parameters, message function and reduce function. Send messages through all the edges and update all nodes. Optionally, apply a function to update the node features after receive. This is convenient combination for performing send from all the edges the message and then receive for all the nodes the reduce, reduce function, right? So this is like a condensed version. And so let's figure out what are my message function and reduce function, right? So message function. We are going to be first extracting the BXJ. So the, the edge is going to be connecting <clears throat> my VJ to my V. And so I'm extracting here the representation that lives on VJ, right? So my BXJ is going to be the BX associated to my vertex J, right? So this guy here, BXJ. Cool. Then I have that my edge EJ is going to be the summation of the rotated edge of this edge, right? The rotated source, right? And then the destination um, vertex, right? So here you have, so you have the edge representation, like C rotation, C, C rotation of EX, right? Then we have the D of the source, so DXJ. And then finally, EX for the destination, so which is EX, right? Cool. Then I actually store this EJ in this capital E so that we are going to be ending up with all the representation for later usage because later we're going to be using this EJ over here on the bottom right. Okay, so now we have computed the message and therefore, so after the message um, after the message is computed, we are going to be calling the reduce function. And the reduce function finished to compute the update uh, formulas, right? So we have the AX is going to be the AX for my own data, right? So this AX, capital X is going to be all the vertices and lowercase x is going to be this one, right? So lowercase x. Then I checked my mailbox, right? So the message function sent a message through the uh, through the edge and now at the receiving end we get a message right so we check the mailbox and we receive this bxj right uh, so here we get bxj then i also listen and we have the representation ej right so that's coming too then i compute the sigmoid here i have the sigmoid for the uh, incoming edge right so the sigmoid of the incoming edge and then all we have to do now is going to be having that my h is going to be my rotated x right so ax is the rotated myself uh, the vertex representation of my own and then i have to sum right of, over all the incoming edges of my gate which is multiplying my incoming representation, incoming rotated representation. And then we divide by all those um, sigmas, right? All those sigmoids, sigmoids, which is this one, right? So we multiply sigma to this bx, and then we divide by all, all of them, right? By the sum of all of them, and then we sum uh, all these guys, right? So we have the summation of these scaled bj which is then also normalized by the sum of all the sigmas and that's it so we have now the lower h which is going to be uh, written in the big uh, container of x's h's and so that's how we uh, 
write down these three equations, right? Four equations. Well, three, right? We haven't seen this last one. So what else? So now we can retrieve H, right? Because we have just updated all the representation, which has been computed here and returned there. Uh, then we can also get new the new edges, right? Because we we wrote the edge information here, right? So here we were writing the new edge information, and here we've been writing the new x h information. So we retrieve the new h and the new e. We divide by the square root of the size such that things don't change with the uh, size of the. Um, of the of the hidden representation this is just you know technicality but it allows you to have like a, a consistent uh, scaling factor like we have seen last week during the uh, set to set no the attention we were dividing by the square root of the dimension such that the soft argmax uh, was behaving uh, similarly right regardless of the um, of the dimension right so we don't change the temperature then we apply a uh, batch normalization such that we get nice gradients and doesn't overfit and you know all the nice things that batch norm gives us. Finally, we apply the nonlinearity, right? The H, the plus. So we compute this uh, nonlinearity for this one and this one. And then we can write that my new H, so the representation for the first hidden layer, so my second layer is going to be my input X plus h, right? So we have the input x plus this guy here, this real positive part. And the same, we're gonna have the e representation is gonna be my initial representation plus this new e. Finish, and we return h and e. Uh, I have a multiplayer perceptron, and then here I have this uh, stack of layers. So here uh, I just call my gated CN, uh, GCN, and so you can see all these matrices, but again, we don't care. Um, some stuff for collecting and accuracy computation. Okay, let's test the forward pass. So how do we test the forward pass? Here I just define my, my data, and then I have my batch of X's is going to be the data that lives on the vertices. Okay, so my X is going to be the data that lives on the vertices. And my E is going to be the data that lives on the on the on the edges. These are all ones, and these are just the degree. So I I show you a few a few of these uh, values. Just yeah. the input, right? Say again. That your E's will be <clears throat> quote unquote all ones just for the first uh, first layer or the first stack uh, first. Uh, sorry, what's the word? The, the input that stack. In the rest of them, you will pass the outputs of the previous. Yeah, 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 absolutely, yes. So these are the input values, right? So my my graph, which is the domain, has I, I put something, some signal on, on at the beginning, which is kind of arbitrary right now. Uh, for the nodes, I put how many input connections I have, and for the edges, I just put one. And then you have several layers of this uh, graph convolutional net. Uh, like here, so you have this gated graph convolutional net has uh, a few a few layers, right? So if you have L, which is the number of layers, you're gonna have as many uh, graph convolutional network layers that are the one I showed you before uh, as the numbers, you know, as as L, right? And so you you stack several of these layers, and at the beginning you have this degree and all ones, and then as you have multiple stacks, you start you know having some uh, representation that evolves, right? Makes sense, right? Yes, no. Yeah, yeah. So is, would that kind of be like the value of E would kind of be like the weight of the edge, sort of? Is that uh, wrong? Uh, no, the value on E is the uh, representation, right? Uh, so we, E has like a he, E here. Uh, okay, right now it's just one, right? But later on in the f in the following up layers, this is going to have a vector, and this vector basically allow you to tune this gate for this incoming message. Let let's finish the notebook. Okay. Then. Otherwise, we don't finish the notebook, and then I, I can answer every question you have. All right. So I show you here. Um, like this DGL graph, which had these features. These features are going to be my input. 
uh, I have in this case 133 nodes and 739 edges. How, how many are, what is the maximum number of edges I can have? You following? 133 square, right? Uh, divided by two. Yeah. On the order of 133 square, right? Uh, cool. All right, so let's execute this one. Uh, so we see at the beginning the network doesn't uh, doesn't cannot really classify this uh, <laughs> cannot classify correctly, and this is just a stupid thing. So let's actually train. Now let's actually figure out how to train this network. So I have my J, my my objective function, which is going to be the cross entropy um, of the you know the the, the scores the batch scores and the batch labels, right? So these are what my network uh, tells me, right? This is batch scores, the logits, and then I have the, the labels, which are the, the original uh, the original labels for the for the graphs. And then this is actually, it, it ran fine. So we, it, everything was working. We have the four pass, you know, co loss computation, zero grad backward optimizer step. And so we define here a training function, which is exactly the same as we have seen all the time. Let me run this line as well. So training function, uh, we exactly know everything, right? So axes are the data, the features on the nodes, on the vertices. E is gonna be the features on the edges. The batch scores, the logits, are basically the output of my model. The J, the objective function, is going to be the cross entropy between the logits and the targets. Then you optimize the, you, you clear up the, the gradients, you compute backwards, and then you step, right? That's, those, these are the five steps. One, two, three, four, five steps. <coughs> Finish. Uh, evaluation, the same without the updating of the parameters. Um, so here we just have the training data set and the uh, testing data set. And we can check what's the progress here so far. So here I just show you the uh, training and the testing accuracy. Oh, sorry. Uh, let's put 40 epochs maybe. And so let's see whether it works or not. It's getting better. And yep, accuracy is starts to the accuracy starts to grow. Test still low. Okay, it's getting up as well. Yeah, there we go. Convergence. Yes, yes. <laughs> So again, all we want to think about, right? Uh, if you think about from the perspective of the, the, the attention, we have a set of values, right? And in attention, we didn't have any kind of connection between these values. It's just a set. Everything looks at everyone, right? So the attention, you have to check everything that is going on because you have no idea which one should be uh, looking at what. In this case, we, okay, that's the main point, right? What did uh, Xavier said yesterday? The main point is the sparsity in the agency metrics, right? Because the sparsity gives you structure and structure is the number one that are telling you who's connected with whom. So if everyone is connected with everyone, you get everything one, right? Everywhere. Uh, see, it's converging here. So if you have everyone looking at everyone, your agency metrics is gonna be just a metrics with all ones. Um, if you have, you know, just a few uh, vectors that are connected to each other, then you get, you know, some uh, some sporadic ones, right? So you go, you're gonna get a, uh, you know, a sparse matrix. Okay, this stuff was going to 100% accuracy before. Uh, I guess I should set a seed such that I can show you <laughs> better better trials. Um, that was pretty much everything from it. So really, there is no much big deal. I think at least from this first perspective and what I learned in this past week <laughs> about these networks. Um, are there questions? Right, I, I can take questions right now. I mean, I didn't want to, to, to take forever to finish the class. Otherwise, uh, if people have to leave, they can't. Uh, it's also, I am nine minutes over, so I'm also not 
on time, but you know, better than worse. <laughs> yes. Hi. So what exactly did we predict here? I, yeah, so I know we had the classes, the seven classes of graphs in the beginning. Um, yeah. So, so these are we, the classes. These are the classes, and then I'm going to be generating down here. I'm generating my, uh, where is it, training data set. I can't see. Hold on. <laughs> train, train, train. Here. So training data set. It creates um, this data set of 350 graphs that have anything between 10 to 20 vertices each. And then they can be anything uh, of those eight classes we have seen before, okay? It can be uh, anything like, let me un unzoom here. So it can be class seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one, okay? And zero. So you can have any of these one. And now, now you're asking, this, this stuff has, um, a variable number of vertices, right? And now you're asking, you're questioning your uh, your network, which net, which type of graph did I give you, right? And so our convolutional graph, convolutional network tells you which type of graph you're looking at, right? So it's doing basically a classification of your um, agency metrics, right? Which is specifying the connectivity of these vertices. So about sure. the about the so the train set is a set of small graphs, right? Mm -hmm. um, and the batch size there is fifty. So that's fifty graphs of varying sizes, varying number of nodes from ten to twenty. Yes, it's not necessary that each batch should have graphs with the same number of nodes. Uh, that's what's done inside. That's what what's in, what's done in terms of uh, from DGL for for giving you you know. Uh, speed in uh, in training, right? So, but that's 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 done uh, behind the uh, behind your back, right? Uh, it's the same as you when you train for language model, right? So you want to batch all the sentences with similar lengths, such that you don't waste computation. So it's the similar way in a similar way you can do here as well, right? Oh, okay. did but what I, did the what was the dimensions of the output look like? Um, uh, here, was right? That, so my yeah so my here <clears throat> i have an mlp that goes from hidden hidden dimension of the whatever thing to my output dimension so what is the output dimension let's go figure out out of out the output dimension number eight right so eight are the possible classes therefore i will give you eight you know a eight vector a logit of dimension eight uh, finally, whenever you have this logit of dimension eight, so it's just a classifier, right? You plug this inside the cross entropy uh, here, loss of my logits against my labels. And this loss is defined down here, is my cross entropy, which expects logits and then computes, you know, the, the final score. And then you just run back propagation. So did, you, yeah. Did every node have a like a logit, um, and the label each node has the same label, which corresponds to the class of the overall graph, or is that not how that works? Each graph has a vector of logits, right? So you, you want to classify graphs, different graphs. So you provide these graphs to the network. And these graphs have arbitrary structure, right? They don't have a finite number of vertices. So you have, you know, let's say you have like 10 graphs uh, and each of them are like, you have a graph of size five, five, size 10, size 15, size 20. So you have sets with different number of vertices and a specific connection between these vertices. So given this variable length, set you have to specify and you specify you you tell the connection between these vertices you ask your network to tell you give me a uh, logit vector where you're going to be uh, showing me basically uh, what graph 
this belongs to, right? Which family it belongs to. So eight, eight are the possibilities you have, you know, circle, star, blah, blah, blah. Each input, input graph will be mapped towards one specific of this guy, right? So you just do a classification of the type of graph. But the point is that these graphs have a variable number of vertices, okay? So you have to basically uh, uh, query somehow the, 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 the structure, right? The graph convolutional net has to intrinsically um, extract what is the typology of connectivity you provide. Hmm? Oh, okay, cool. Thank uh, you. We are using this example that was shown was classification of graphs. Yeah. But also they can be a use case or mostly there would be a use case in real world where we have one single graph where each node represents a particular entity and we yeah. need to classify those entities. So then how do we do that? Like take some part of a graph and train the model over that and then read the rest right, of the right. part. So, 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 okay, this one here, you get, uh, you have like different graphs and then at the end, you're going to be getting them all together, right? So whenever you have the uh, gated CNN here, you at the end, you you have like the forward, you get this uh gcn this part here right and you have mean nodes right so dgl y it gets the mean of all the nodes and then you apply the ML mlp on this mean representation uh this is for this classification of the whole graph right uh but then if you'd like to do the other stuff right which is going to be you, you don't have this function right you just don't have this line and you're going to be uh, applying like a uh, a vector like a logit vector like out of each vector right so each vertice each vertice you're gonna have a logit a logit for like a, a vector logit for each vertex vertex ver, ver, vertex right it's called yes yeah okay cool so you have a logit per vertex and then you do the uh training on each of these guys right and so that would be the um for example, if there is a, um, if you go to DGL, the DGL.ai, this class took really a lot of effort, guys. <laughs> tutorial, uh, this one, tutorial. No, what is it? There is a, come on. Oh, okay, here. Yeah, cool. So in this case, they are doing um, they are doing classification of the nodes. Okay, this is the second type of thing. So in this case, you have a karate karate club. I'm not sure if you're familiar. And there is like the instructor number zero, and then there is the um, the manager number thirty three, and then these ed edges represent uh, what are the um, um, basically the uh, interaction outside the club, right? In, in, in real life, right? So number four, you know, interacts a lot with the instructor outside the club. And number 26 interacts a lot with number, with the manager outside the club. So you only have two labels. You have instructor and uh, manager. And then you'd like to get a label for all these other nodes, all these other vertices. So whenever you do the training part, this is called semi-supervised learning because you only have a few labels, right? So whenever you train this stuff, you're going to have, you know, okay, you have your confnet, no, your graph confnet, uh, which is outputting a number of classes per each vertex, right? So each vertex has the, the full logic. But then during training, you have here that the, the training is going to be the, uh, you get the logits. These are logits for every vertex. But then when you, uh, compute the final loss, which is the negative log likelihood, you only select the labels that you have, which is label for the 33 and the, what's our little guys, right? Where, so you have zero and 33. These are the only two uh, labels you have. And so there is a vector, which is called zero into 33, 33 somewhere, yeah, here. This is my label nodes. They are just these two guys. And so in my uh, training loss here, you only select the two nodes that are that have a label. You enforce those labels to be this one, right? 
And then you train classical stuff, right? Optim zero grad, back prop, optimize, step. Um, and these allow you to basically propagate throughout the whole uh, network structure, the whole graph structure. What is this information that has to come out from the logits of two specific vertices, right? So you have several layers stack of convolutional uh, graph, convolutional nets. Uh, and then you enforce, you know, those two vertices to output that specific label. Uh, and then you back prop, and then basically all this information propagates through the network, which propagates a kind of representation across this uh, domain. And it shows you, if you do a plotting, uh, this is at the beginning. So this is the representation or of the vertices um, without training. And then after you train, after a few epochs, you can see how this representation gets attracted, right? So 0 and 33 gets pulled away such that they are linearly classi classifi cla classifiable. Uh, well, they are you know, easy to tell, tell, told, told apart. And then these are basically dragging uh, vertices close to them based on, basically on the number of connections they have, sort of, right? And th that's how you do uh, classification on, on vertices rather than classification of graphs, right? Maybe, yeah, yesterday we didn't quite mention how you apply uh, these things, but again, like Xavier, like myself, are not maybe too interested in the um, application part, but perhaps more in the in the algor algorithmic part. Did I answer your question? Oh, that makes sense, yeah. That okay, sense. awesome. Uh, at least I make sense sometimes. More questions? No? You're done? Yeah. You're fed up? Nobody else left. Ah? Huh? There are 18 people. <laughs> yeah, dinner. I'm hungry. My, my roommate just ate my dinner. Yeah. Like, the hell? <laughs> These two weeks were crazy. <laughs> I really worked a lot. <laughs> All right. Peace. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So this was, like, I think, one of my most intensive lectures so far. Um, I prepared it like in under one week and I think I may have covered a lot of materials. So uh, it's totally reasonable uh, to be like somehow overwhelmed <laughs> at the moment. Uh, but then how can you actually squeeze out everything out of this video, right? So there are a few steps I would uh, highly recommend you to follow. Starting with, you know, uh, comprehensions issues, right? Again, I might have been confusing. I have also re-recorded uh, a few new chunks because I messed up in class. And so if you have any question I, I have not yet addressed, just type it down in the comment section below this video. Moreover, if you'd like to follow up with me on the latest news about teaching and machine learning and very cute and pretty things, just follow me on uh, Twitter. I will, you know, talk about the latest news over there. Uh, moreover, if you'd like to uh, be always up to date with my latest content, I would recommend you to subscribe to my channel and uh, click on the notification bell such that you don't miss any uh, new video. Um, if you like this video, you know, don't forget to press the like button. Uh, I really appreciate that. Um, searching. So uh, each of these videos have an English transcription. Uh, we have a Japanese, Spanish, Italian, Turkish, Mandarin, Korean translations as well available for you if English is not your primary language. And again, if you'd like to help out in the translation process, please feel free to uh, contact me by email or on Twitter. Moreover, you should really, really, really take the time to go over the notebook uh, we have covered today. Uh, and check every line of code, right? So because there are many things I may have, you know, not have spent enough time today just uh, for sake of, you know, keeping this video under a, <laughs> within a specific time amount. But then you should really go through every line and deeply understand what's going on. And if you find a typo or error or bug, like many of you have already found, do please uh, report it on GitHub. And if you feel inclined, just you can also send a pull request by fixing this error. Okay, uh, that's great because we can, you know, all uh, benefit from your contribution, and you also get some value out of, you know, 
getting your hands dirty, right, with the code. And finally, you're going to be helping me and the whole machine and deep learning community uh, that are uh, using this material. And that was pretty much it. Thanks again for sticking with me. And as I've been told to say, like, share and subscribe. See you next time. Bye bye.